Okay, so I want to do a little example uh, using spontaneous emission. So I want to imagine a system where we have an atom and we have initially some number nb of, of those atoms and they're all in this excited state psi b and there's some lower energy state psi a to which we can make a transition. And we assume there's only one such state and that the rate for spontaneous emission for those spontaneous transitions from B to A is given by A. And I want to know after some amount of time T, how many atoms do we expect are still going to be left in the, in the B state? And I'm assuming that there's no background electromagnetic radiation so that we don't end up having transitions back up from the A state to the B state and we don't have any stimulated emission going from the B state down to the A state. Okay, so then this is quite simple. So the A represents the probability per unit time of making a transition from B to A. And so if I have NB atoms in my B state, then the number per unit time that we expect to go down to the A state is just that number NB times this transition probability A. Okay, and so that means that the rate of change of the number of B states, of the number of B atoms, is going to be equal to negative that, minus A times NB. And that's a very simple differential equation. So we can solve that and that gives us the exponential function. So this is NB equals E to the minus AT times NB times a constant, which is gonna be NB of zero. Um, so, so that's the answer. Um, it's just a standard exponential decay. So this is exactly the same equation that we would use when thinking about some radioactive material. If we wanted to know how many nuclei of a certain isotope remain after some amount of time and we have a rate for those nuclei decaying uh, to some other nuclei, then we would do the same thing and we would find the same kind of exponential expression. And it's common to associate what's called a lifetime to that exponential decay. And so we define tau uh, as one over A. So that's the time constant in the exponential. And we call that the lifetime of the state. Okay, and so that's the time after that time you would have a fraction one over E of your original atoms remaining in the B state. And after twice that time, you would have a, a fraction one over E squared and so forth. Okay, just a, a slight variation on that question. What if instead of just one lower energy state, we actually have various lower energy states, A1, A2, A3, maybe up to some AK, um, in that case, what would the lifetime of our state be? Or what would the number of atoms in the B state remaining be after some amount of time? And so then we can see that there are now a bunch of possible transitions from the B state down to all of those lower states. And so when we want to understand what is the rate of change of the number of atoms in the B state, well, we have to take into account the spontaneous emission rate for a state, B going to A1, and then the spontaneous emission rate for A going to B2. Okay, and so each, each of those processes is a separate way which we can lose the B atoms. Um, and calculating the rate for each of those is just the same as before. And so we just have then a sum of terms on the right hand side. Um,
and each of the terms is the number of phi atoms times some spontaneous transition rate. And so where we had A before, now we just have a sum of A's, and so everything else is the same. And so when we solve the equation, we get NB is going to be equal to E to the, I'll just call it A1, all the way up to AK times T times NB of zero. And so we can see that the net transition rate That's just going to be A equals A1 plus AK. And then if we want to know the lifetime in that more complicated situation, so I'll call that the net lifetime, that's going to be tau, and that will be 1 over A1 plus A2 plus up to AK. And so in realistic situations, then you might typically have that type of uh, situation where you have many different possible lower energy states that you could make a transition to. And so what you'd need to do is do some separate calculation uh, for each of those transition rates. That involves calculating matrix elements between your B state and your whatever final state uh, with the electric dipole moment operator if we're working in this dipole approximation.